Hey everybody, welcome back to the Renaissance Woodworker. I'm Shannon Rogers, your host, and welcome to my shop. No, I'm not in the middle of yet another power outage. I've got the lights off for a reason this time. When you are smoothing a tabletop like I've got right here, you can have your overhead lights on and everything will look great. And then you go to apply finish and you see maybe a plane track or a small bit of tear out pop out of nowhere. This is where the beauty of raking light will really help you. I have a window just off camera offside my bench. And of course, working in the daytime when the sunlight can stream through is really, really helpful. As I stand and look at my board, I can see every little bit of imperfection. I've got a little bit of plane track right here. There's a little spot right here that while it's not torn out, it's slightly discolored from another plane. Maybe it's a little bit rougher than it should be, and it certainly feels a little rougher. The areas where I've already hit with a smoothing plane feel really, really smooth, and those slight rough areas come out almost looking a little chalky compared to the rest of it. There's a lot of issues on this tabletop that I won't be able to see with the overhead light on. If I come over and flip the switch, this top looks absolutely gorgeous. So I'm gonna bring you in closer, turn the lights out, and hopefully you can see what I'm seeing. Here's the tabletop from kind of my planing perspective. And the key is that the sunlight is coming in from this window, coming in opposite me. So when I just isolate that light by removing the overhead lights and give the camera a chance to adjust, now, the light coming in from the window casts everything in relief. And it makes those little things like plane tracks very, very apparent. I've got a little plane track right here that's popping out. There's a slight shadow. I've got another one right here where there's a little bit of shadow. This center section I talked about before is just a little bit rougher. And what I've got is reversing grain in here. So I'll need to spend a little bit of time working on that. There's some plane tracks down here that I didn't notice before, but now they're cast in shadow as that light comes in from the window. So not only do you need to have raking light, but a lot of times you need to flip your board around and look at it from a couple directions. Here's the tabletop from the other side, looking at it with the light running across and over top of those imperfections, if you will and that raking light essentially just smooths out all those imperfections and it makes the top look incredible. The figure and the curl that we have in here really stands out along the center of the tabletop and none of those plane tracks are visible. So you can see how shifting your perception from one side to the other will allow any of those tracks and little bits of tear out just kind of pop out of the surface. Ultimately, what we wanna do is be able to move the top around, see it from several different angles, and work on those flaws. So while I've got this nice raking light, I want to take advantage of it and clean up any of those imperfections. Periodically, I just want to step back and look at it again in that raking light and see how we're doing. And they got rid of those plane tracks. There's a couple right here I need to address. And that's got that taken care of. Now I think this tabletop is ready for finish. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be daylight. The key is to have a single point of light. So I can turn on a light that's by the camera to illuminate things a little bit better, but now I've got daylight coming in from another direction and it's blending it and it's filling in some of those shadows. So if I were working at night, it would work just the same, which would be a matter of isolating that light source 
and recognizing where the light is coming from and what might, gonna, might be thrown into shadow when you observe it opposite the light or with the light. In the end, it's going to be placed in an environment where light sources are going to be coming from every direction. So isolating a single point of light is going to help us get it as clean as we possibly can and knowing that when it goes to its final resting place, if you will, it's going to be bombarded with light from different sources and any of these issues you're seeing now will be shown in much less relief. However, this single point of single light source is akin to putting a high gloss finish on here. That high gloss is going to reflect light a lot more and it will accentuate any of these additional flaws. So while this single point of light may be kind of an unnatural situation for a piece of furniture, it's a great last defense to ensure you're getting a perfect, beautiful surface before you open that can of finish. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time. Making jokes for getting on in